My name is Rindy Eckert. I'm an, I'm an artist in residence here at Wesleyan, working on a piece with the students called uh, The Last Days of the Old Wild Boy. It's about a man who at the end of his life is looking back, who was raised by wolves and who wants to recover that nature. You hear that? What? They're here. Dad? The, the pack. They're howling. I don't hear it. I went off to uh, be part of the world of opera. I didn't find my way in that world, it didn't appeal to me. I had the opportunity to uh, join a kind of avant-garde troupe in Seattle. And pretty soon I was ensconced in this very active avant-garde theater scene in San Francisco. I gained a national reputation, came to New York, and have been uh, working there ever since. <laughs> These little, little scenarios occasionally occur to me. If it sticks with me, I know that I need to do something about it. For some reason, this stuck with me. What I was excited about was I could see how all these things can kind of weave in poetically. So there's, there's this assembling of things from these various parts. And uh, we, we assemble our stage in front of the audience. So this idea of the artifice, kind of notion of we're making a stage for you. This is a stage in which we are players, in which you know all these things are going to happen. There are certain conventions that uh, what I think normal theater adheres to that uh, I don't. Sometimes you get to an emotional reality not by imagining the emotional reality, but by putting yourself in the physical shape of that emotional reality, and you discover a whole world of possibilities and a whole whole narrative frame of reference that isn't accessible in any other way. In my theater, it's impossible to know what it is on the basis of the script alone. You have to hear the sound of it, you have to see it to, to understand it. I am very much uh, a hands-on creator. That's not quite correct, but I like to think of myself as at my best in the room when I'm dealing with actual, the actual theater of it. What's happening in the room is really important to me. I, I also like to play. I mean, I, I think the idea of a play, I take it quite seriously. <laughs> playing with objects, playing with people, playing with the situation, playing with our bodies, playing with our voices, playing with the sound in the room, playing with the shape of the room, the total package. That's what I'm interested in. I'm going to be a taste in the box. Hello, this is fun. Rinzi's going to be like... You sillies. Can I put one here? Uh, yes. This is actually really cool looking. Rindy is gonna... I'm Love trying this. to figure out how to... Alright, let's take these guys out. Oh, be careful of oh. the Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Can we dismantle this and put it in another place and time it? Yeah. <laughs> I want my audience to be lost, but not so lost that they panic. There's a way in which you hope your audience will trust you, to take you on a journey into a strange land. Generally when they're going into a peace of mind, they're going to a world that's slightly different. start from a place of calm, then it gets this kind of motion of, you can just touch places, and so there's a sense of, 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 of a kind of feral anxiety, this restless pack in the background. 
And uh, so, in order to get lost and not panic, they have to trust that their guide will either lead them out or show them the signs they need to look for. If you're lost and you don't panic, you see the world in an entirely fresh way. The doors that were open to me I, and that I took led me somewhere else. Led me into a world with other people like me in it and uh, they were very happy to see me. It was like, it was like getting to my village. You know, let's just play. <laughs>